Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, everyone. So just quickly to remind you then, as Sarah says, it's a, a MOOC, um, an intervention into uh, this pathway between second and third level education in, in Ireland, uh, responding to the, to the research uh, really that, that highlights that this transition uh, is not an easy uh, passage. So the intervention then is a, is, a, is a massive open online course called Get Ready Education, a Learning Journey. And it's a dual pathway MOOC, so there are, there are two routes through the MOOC. Uh, one is teacher-led and the other one is uh, self-directed. And the intention then is to make this uh, transition much smoother. These were the intended outcomes that we uh, outlined at the, at the start of the project. This was the sort of the scope of the project. Uh, you can look at them quickly. I'm going to revisit those towards the end of the presentation. And these are the, uh, the, the, the partners in, in involved in this. Um, and you know, I think the, the forum have, have noted that um, under their roadmap that uh, HEIs will be able to work collaboratively to enable innovation and development in a regulated and increasingly digital world. We're doing that. Uh, this is the really the, I suppose the home screen for the Get Ready MOOC. You can see we've created a, a guest login and we've invited a number of uh, people, guidance counsellors, teachers, uh, other people in, in education to, to look in and give us the feedback on that. And then there's the, 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 the path, the two pathways there, one for the schools and one for the self-directed learners. Um, we did circulate a login for guest access to, to the panel. Did any of you get a chance to look in? Did. Great. Thanks. So the, I suppose the, the, the pedagogical model um, as it first envisaged was this, uh, with, with the MOOC, um, connectivist learning, as uh, Siemens and Downs have noted, uh, in connectivist learning, a, a teacher will guide students to information and answer key questions as needed in order to support students' learning and sharing on their own. Um, that was, a, oh, that was a, a major part of it. In addition, um, Chili Salmon's eativities was, was, was a model that was, that was employed by, by Jennifer. <coughs> so that we see this as the kind of interaction then between the, the three players, the e-moderator, the student, and the teacher. And the e-moderator is an additional role. Uh, probably most MOOCs don't have an e-moderator, e uh, although the, the BLE MOOC in the, in the UK is working with, uh, with, with a, a similar kind of idea. And you can see that there are interactions within the classroom and interactions outside of the classroom. So uh, I'll try and go through these uh, outputs f fairly quickly. This is uh, really just picking up on, on, on the second year of, of the project, um, the, the, the guest MOOC, teacher orientation area. This is to support teachers. Uh, many of the teachers we've spoken to, guidance counselors, are a little bit uh, nervous about engaging with the MOOC and their own digital uh, skills. So we've, we, we've developed a handbook and a teacher orientation for them. Uh, we've redesigned some of the modules and we've completed uh, the development of the other modules. Uh, again, just quickly, in the second uh, pilot that, that we ran, 45% uh, of those participating uh, completed 100% uh, of, the, of the course, which you know, by, by MOOC standards, completion rates are high. Um, given that we've got different pathways, it's probably a little early to say whether that is, is a is a good or, or, or indifferent completion rate. Um, further, further outputs is the uh, splitting of, of, of the modules in, in the MOOC, um, and I'll come on to that as, as well in a moment. Two promotional videos, if we have time I'll give you a little uh, excerpt from, from those two. One is aimed at the students and one is aimed at the, at the teachers, they're just 90 second uh, videos. Uh, the, the, the full rollout then of the of, of the MOOC in its entirety, uh, and a lot of promotion, a lot of time spending uh, pr promoting through newspapers, uh, newsletters, articles, uh, through uh, attending at schools, meeting with guidance counsellors. Content development. So uh, the initial proposal was to, to develop a number of, uh, of MOOCs, three really. One was this, the, the bigger one, which is these six uh, modules, well, orientation plus five modules, they're, they're complete. A further MOOC then is aimed at, at parents to support them, parents particularly of uh, who, whose students are first time uh, into higher education. Uh, that's, we have the content, we just need to develop that in the online format. And a fi final MOOC which is to support 
faculty and the wider um, players within uh, higher education to support the, the undergraduate. Uh, outputs to the end of the year is completion of those final two MOOCs that I've just referred to, uh, completion of pilot three, which we'll, we'll be running with eight to 12 schools, evaluation of that feedback, and continuing to promote. Um, so 25 schools uh, have been talking to us about taking the MOOC in some uh, format. Um, <coughs> I think that you know they're still looking at it. One of the one of the big issues really is where does it sit within the within the leaving uh, within the um, senior cycle and the leaving certificate period, and that's that's something that they that each school looks at and looks at differently. Um, but the flexibility that that we have within the MOOCs that they may be engaged with with one or two modules rather than the rather than all of them is um, is, is something that they've they've welcomed. Um, those schools that have, have taken this journey with us through pilot one, two, and, and now three, um, we find that there's an, an increased confidence with the, with the teachers to engage with the MOOC now that they're familiar with it and they're using it, and they see the benefits of, it, of the outcomes. So this, uh, in terms of the lessons learned, and this, this, this uh, a flexible approach to, to the modules, the, the online element where students can engage with material outside of the, of the classroom, the schools are choosing which cohort. Uh, we haven't dictated where it sits within the senior cycle. Uh, as I mentioned in previous presentations, it's, it's also available to first-year undergraduate students. We're promoting that heavily in, in, in IT Sligo. Uh, so you can take it at different points uh, in, this, uh, in this pathway into higher education. Uh, well, the feedback we're getting from the schools is that the, the time that they're really identifying as being a good time to run it is, it, is the second half of each term. October, December, um, even November, December, really kind of after that, after the, the midterm break, and in April to, to June. Uh, digital badges, this is the currency of the MOOC. We've, we've heard about digital badges from, from all aboard. Um, we developed badges for each of, each of the modules uh, upon completion. We have had wider discussions around a, a currency uh, that would, the, what are the, what are the students, what do the school, um, school children actually think is, is a good currency? CAO points is the currency that they're really focused on. Um, we've had discussions around ca can, we, uh, can we tap into that? They're only at discussion level at the moment. But I think that the, that the badges uh, are being widely recognized uh, increasingly within Ireland and, and elsewhere. So, um, open educational resources, the, 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 we, we've incorporated or we've linked to a number of projects, uh, some of which have been funded by, by the National Forum and others are open, openly available. And this, this speaks to uh, Digital Roadmap Recommendation 3, that institutions will adopt um, open educational principles with regards to teaching and learning. Um, so we've linked to um, the Learning Innovation Network's student-led learning projects and we've used videos from that project. Uh, we've linked to another project we've, you've seen earlier, the Student Success Digital Toolbox. Uh, we've also uh, linked to the embedded things from the All Aboard project. Externally, an ep a project that some of us, uh, some of the institutions in Ireland did with Epigeum, Academic Success Skills for Learning. We've incorporated that in, in IT Sligo. That's not available, obviously, to all of the institutes. Um, then we've looked at the careers portal where uh, this is a, a big thing that the students want is to sort of advice on, on careers. There are, there are a lot of videos here for the different, uh, the different kind of disciplines, the, the, the different roles that they may, take, they may take on post higher education. So we're linking to that, encouraging them to, to, to look at those. Um, and this is uh, from, from uh, the Open University. I've created a number of open badge courses. This is one that's just, uh, just started. Introduction to Cybersecurity. So again, things that are relevant, things that are very relevant to, to this particular uh, demographic, we're, we're, we're promoting it within, within the MOOC and, and pointing them towards it. They may not, um, may not engage with it, but we're, we're pushing them in that direction. Okay, so just um, coming back to the, the, the project outcomes, the intended uh, outcomes that we had, um, pre-development skills to better manage the transition. Yes, 
that, that is being achieved uh, through the content within those MOOCs and through the engagement with, with the MOOCs. Uh, development of a more engaged student, um, I think we're, we don't know yet. Um, the time will tell on that one and the project needs to run uh, a lot longer. Higher retention rate of students uh, at third level, again, that, that's something that we won't know in the short term. Better linkages with, with schools. Um, again, we have you know, been asked to engage with students as partners, and I think that by, by going into the schools and talking to the, to the schools, we're, we're achieving that. Uh, and by taking feedback from, uh, from the senior cycle students, we're, we're really getting an understanding of, of what they want and, and what they need. Um, development of digital literacies uh, for both students and teachers. Again, this is, this is happening, some of it by design, some of it simply by by their participation within the, the course. Um, again, previous panel feedback said that giving learners experience of online learning prior to university should help develop their capacity to study successfully and autonomously, uh, autonomously uh, in, a, in addition to the value of the orientation itself. Um, and the, the final one then is uh, students better prepared for lifelong learning. Again, that, that uh, really speaks to that, that same panel feedback. Okay, impact um, reach dissemination, uh, a number of uh, national and international conferences where we have presented, um, but pr probably more critically uh, than those is the engagement with uh, the Institute of Guidance Counselors, uh, the National Centre for Guidance Education. The, the autumn newsletter came out on Monday and I think by Tuesday morning we'd had 25 inquiries from um, career guidance uh, teachers looking to uh, for information on the MOOC and, and some of them committing to, to run it. Um, so that's that's been very uh, effective. Uh, promotional leaflets. Well, we have leaflets in, in kind of this kind of format here. Uh, College Awareness Week, and this uh, this dialogue through one-to-one -one school visits. This is actually just from IT Sligo, but our student ambassadors will be visiting 277 schools, um, targeting 10,000 students. Um, again, this is a, a, about engaging with schools and further education providers, um, acknowledging that they're best placed to identify content needs. Um, and that's a, another forum aim. Um, impacts in terms of practices. Uh, again, uh, this, is, this, this speaks to the forum's aim to develop a consistent, seamless and coherent digital experience for students in Irish higher education. Um, and I think that this model of blending the MOOC, the online content with, with, uh, with, with, with uh, classroom activities, classroom discussions, uh, forum, whatever, is, is certainly a model that they will experience in, in third level education. Uh, impacting on learners and, and learning, uh, again, Picking up on the digital roadmap recommendation one, there will be increased use of active learning approaches to student experience, harnessing potential for technology uh, while building digital skills confidence. And this one, uh, organizational practices. Uh, MIC, they might talk uh, about this in the Q&A. They're looking at integrating the MOOC into their, their pathway, uh, access to higher education. And we've certainly, I think all the partners have experienced this increase in collaboration, sharing resources across partner institutes, and developing relationships. These, these are all byproducts, really, of working on this uh, project collabor collaboratively. A minute left. Better move on to uh, sustainability. Okay, so beyond the funding, uh, through partnership and support, and possibly new partners. One of the issues that we that we have here outlined is that the because we went with Moodle as the platform, there are hosting costs, um, eight to ten thousand at the at the top end. So that's an annual uh, fee. How do we how do we pay for that? Is it the is it the forum? Is it the HEA? There are, is it new partners? If all of the HEIs were 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 uh, supporting this, then it's a small amount of uh, contribution from each of those. Um, I think when we started out with the, with the project, we talked about the proof of concept, you know, evaluation of the of the outcomes that we need to achieve that in order to for anybody to in, to invest in its uh, support and development. Um, maybe we, again we can tease that out. I see I'm on 15 minutes, so uh, I'll stop there.